Hey, welcome to another edition of Rev Talk this week. We've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to start off with one of our student athletes from the football team, and then we're going to talk to two of our coaches who were off to great springs uh, this past year before COVID stopped women's golf and also Ole Miss baseball as Coach Mike Bianco and Coach Corey Hinkins is coming up. But right now we got Lakia Henry. Lakia, where in the world are you? You're off in Georgia somewhere, right, man? Yes, sir. Vidalia, Georgia, the country. Vidalia. That, they're famous for what, onions? Yes, sir. Vidalia Onions. <laughs> we had uh, we had a basketball player from Vidalia several years ago. I can't remember. I have to think of who it was. But uh, Lakia's over there. He's a senior linebacker from Vidalia, Georgia, and uh, of course came to us from Dodge City Community College. A little bit on on Lakia's background. We've had him on Rev Talk before, but he played running back, inside linebacker there at Vidalia. He had 95 tackles, nine tackles for losses, five sacks, uh, and two fumble recoveries in his last year of high school. Also. Rushed for nearly a thousand yards, missed it by 91 yards. 909. Man, mm -hmm. you got to get on that coach, Lakia. You should have had a yeah, lot of carries. Yeah, man. He didn't give me the ball as much as I wanted to, man, the last few games. But, <laughs> see, it is. but uh, 12 touchdowns, 125 carries. That's a pretty good average, though, for sure. He also ran track and was the first leg of a four by 100 meter relay team that won a state championship his junior year. Then he went to Dodge City Community College, first team Juco All American. Uh, named the number one JUCO inside linebacker in the country by uh, ESPN and had a bunch of people that he talked to in recruiting, Alabama, Arkansas, Auburn, Florida, Texas, Tennessee, and many others. And then, of course, played one year here at Ole Miss this past year. We're going to talk about that in a moment. I kind of want to go back, and yeah. I've talked about this before. In the recruiting process out of JUCO, wow, your phone must have been going crazy. Yeah, yes, sir, it was, man. It, it really was. It was. It was overwhelming at first, you know, like, not having, you know, all that happening, and then all of a sudden it's just like, boom. You know, it was crazy. It really yeah. was. Was it was it fun, though, or was it a, a pain? Yeah. What was it for you? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was fun, man. I really enjoyed that whole process, you know, like, because it didn't happen in high school. So this it was all kind of new to me, just listening to everybody else tell you how good you are, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was I enjoyed that process while it lasted. It was fun. Uh, Lakia, what happened at Dodge City? I know you've been at Ole Miss a year. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But what happened at Dodge City to make you such a better player? Uh, I would say I, re I had a I had a real good group of friends I was hanging around. I didn't hang around, you know, the wrong crowd. I didn't really get into stuff I wasn't supposed to. Um, also, I really had – just being out there in the middle of nowhere, it kind of it kind of shifts your mind and make you think, like, you know, if you really don't – this is really your last chance, you know, then <laughs> – if it come down to this and this is what it takes and you still don't, you know, do good in football or do good in your grades, then maybe it's not meant to be, you know. So I just had to really take it seriously and really, like, focus and play hard and study hard to get where I am today. Yeah, so you you kind of grew up there. In that, that yeah, period. I had to. Oh, man. Yes, sir, you got to, man. It's a struggle in junior college. It is. You know, Ole Miss last year, uh, he had started inside linebacker, led the team in total tackles, had 88, three and a half tackles for loss, and had a sack at Memphis. He tied for the team lead with seven tackles in that game and then improved that against Cal, led the Rebels with 11 tackles, and against Vanderbilt, led Ole Miss with 15 tackles and had a, uh, a sack and a quarterback hurry and all. And what was the first time around like, Lakey? I know we wanted as a team to win more games, but for you personally, yeah. I, know, I know you had to have a question in the back of your mind. Can I do this at this level? And uh, yeah. what's your evaluation of your play last year? Yeah. So last year, I was really just trying to get adjusted. Um, the SEC men, it was fast. The uh, the linemen, everything, they were stronger. The running backs, they are faster. You know, they're more elusive. So I had to really get adjusted to, you know, how – the, the skill of the players from junior college to the SEC. So, I mean, once I got adjusted, I felt like I was kind of getting better. And really now, it's, for me, this year is, is improvement in my defensive scheme and knowing where I have to be, what I have to do, you know, where, where everybody else is on the field. And I feel like once I prove that on myself, then, you know, the rest is going to come. Let me ask you about the new staff. I've interviewed a bunch of them this summer, you know, getting to meet them for the first time. DJ Dirk is a linebacker coach, co-defensive yeah. coordinator. Uh, what do you think about them as a group and especially your position? Group? Uh, well, I, well, I'm going to start off with Coach Durkin. He's a really cool dude, man. I love that man. He's he's genuine. He cares about us as players. Uh, he cares about this football team and he want to win. Uh, all the other coaches, they bring really great energy to – really great energy to the program, like – 
you know. I see a spark in Ole Miss football, really. I really do. Like, they passionate in what they're doing here. You were here a while, you told me, before we started the interview, and then you went back home. You've got a nine-month-old son, Lakia the yes, third. Sir. And so you decided yes, to go sir. back for a week and hang out with him. Uh, that's yeah, yes, a lot sir. of fun. Yeah, yes, sir, it is, man. He's getting bigger and bigger every time I see him, man. Now, is it going to break your heart if he grows up and, you know, plays baseball or basketball? or? No, man, no. Just – it ain't. Man. Whatever he decides to do, I just – he just better be ready to know he's going to be the best at it. So, endless practice. This is, it's going to be just like football, but it might not be, you know, football itself. But same practices, the same everything. You know, we missed the spring, and that was going to be an opportunity for the coaches to get to see you guys a, a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, and so I know you've only had limited time in front of them. Uh, when you when you left being, you know, isolated with the COVID and came back to Ole Miss for a little while, what are some of the things Coach Love has done with you guys to get you up to speed? Oh, man, we've been hitting it hard. The same way we left from the spring is the same way we hit it when we came back. Um, they expected us to be doing our own workouts over the break when all this – COVID-19 stuff was happening, you know, and some of us were, some of us wasn't, you know, but either way, they still getting us prepared to, to win games and, even, like, should they tell us to be ready, you know, so. What what will we see defensively, Lakia? Anything that, that you haven't played in before? What's the style of defense going to be like from what you know at this point? Uh, Well, it's really aggressive. From what I can tell, his play calling is aggressive. Um. He gonna let the linebackers, you know, really play football, and that's I love I love that about this defense, man. It's 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 meant for us to make plays. It's also also meant for the, some of the defensive linemen to make plays. Like it's a really good scheme for us. I feel like you know, in your guys' room, linebacker room, you got you, you got Sam Williams, Jacquez Jones, Momo Sanago's coming back uh, from mm-hmm. injury and others. I would think you feel like there's pretty good depth there, huh? Oh yeah, man. We we're gonna be really interchangeable, and that's what it's all about. Like having having guys in that you can count on to, you know, if you, if you get a breather, then they come in and they do their thing. You know, like you just have that trust in each other. And we getting there. We are. Like I I really feel confident in every linebacker that's in our room coming into this year. Hey, what were you ma- What are you majoring in school? What have you been doing academically? Uh, multidisciplinary studies. That's just fancy for general studies, really. But uh, I want to go into coaching. Um, mm-hmm. so. I'm just really trying to build up my resume with that because I really know coaching is is really about who you know, you know. So I'm just trying to get as much information as I can from all these coaches here. Hopefully I got a shot in the NFL, build up my resume there, and then come back to coaching, man. That's that's what I plan on doing. Well, I can see you in the NFL for sure. And I can surely okay. see you coaching as well. Uh, yes, sir. Got, willing, yes, sir. Got some leadership skills. But we've got to keep you in Mississippi, coach some, coaching Mississippi for a while. Get a start over here before you go back to Georgia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, sir, yeah. I ain't, I ain't worried about Georgia, man. I ain't worried about Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I just drove through there this past week because I had to – I went to visit my daughter in North Carolina. And so yeah. I, came, I came through Georgia uh, for sure to go visit, visit her. Uh, yeah. I know there's some mystery about when we're going to play. And they yeah. haven't made a complete decision. If we're going to start on time, start late, are they going to move it to January, which would be really kind of kind of crazy. As a player, I know you got to still keep, you know, get your body ready and anticipate yeah. starting it all. Yeah. But have you guys yeah. even talked about the possibilities? Uh, well, no, sir. It's just like everybody else, we talk about possibilities, you know. Um, but they, what they're preaching now is for us to stay ready. Like, if they tell us we're playing this month, you know, next week they want us to be ready. So that's really the main thing they're preaching here. They're not really getting caught up in the medias or all that stuff telling us, you know, when we're going to come back, we just got to be prepared for that. Yeah, and before I let you go, I just want to ask you in general with the with the workouts at this point, what about hunger? I know that, that uh, you returning players, I know you got a hunger to, to have a better year, strong year. Yeah. Uh, are, y'all, are y'all also instilling that in some of the younger guys? Yeah, oh, man, definitely. I mean, and we tell them, you know, just based off last year, you can see just how close we are. But this coaching staff, you know, that that little close, how, how close we were, man, they making that a big difference. Like, we are emphasizing, finishing, we emphasizing, going hard, listening to our inner voice, man. It's, it's I love this coaching staff. They really bring the best out of you, for real. Well, hey, it's so glad to visit. Glad you took a little time uh, oh, yeah, yes. from your little one there for a bit. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we can't wait to see you in person when you get back over here to to Oxford. 
Yes, sir. I appreciate that, Mr. Dave. All right. Lakia Henry joining us here on Reptile. When we come back, Rebel Baseball Coach Mike Bianco, he's next. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom! Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question. Would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with smart choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high-efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good. All right, that's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. Hey, welcome back to Rev Talks. We talked about the head end of the show. We got two of our head coaches this week, and I don't know if any two coaches got off to any better start in the country than these two. We're going to be talking to Coach Mike Bianco here shortly and Corey Hinkus and you know, the baseball team, you know kind of the story of it. And Corey's women's golf team ripped off four straight first-place finishes uh, when COVID-19 hit. But we're, we're pleased to get to talk to Coach B first. And, of course, came to Ole Miss in 2000, was celebrating his 20th season. So I, I guess it's 19-plus seasons, right? <laughs> well, like, like at everything, I think, in 2020 with asterisks and, you know, the pandemic. And, I, yeah, I don't know when you look back 10 years from now, you know, what we're going to look at this and consider this uh, – um, but, but anyway, just happy to, uh, be alive and with you tonight and, uh, uh, happy to have some, some student athletes back on campus finally and in the weight room and, you know, in the cages and in the bullpens and, uh, you know, some, some sense of, uh, normality, I guess, for them anyway. Well, and of course, those of you watching or listening tonight, you know that Ole Miss baseball lost the opener to Louisville, went on to win that series. It was a great first weekend. Yeah. And then uh, after the opening loss, ripped off 17 straight, leading the country in home runs. Everything was going so good. And, you know, Coach, LSU, your alma mater, was packed up getting on the bus, as you may well know with a kid down there. Yeah. Just hit our way. And all of a sudden, it was boom. And, and we, were, we were wondering, is this short term? Is it one weekend? Will we play LSU in the middle of the week? And next thing you know, it just it ended up being the entire season. It's just strange times. It, it really is. And, and, and I think, you know, we talked about, you know, years from now, how will we look back on this? And there'll be so many stories like our story where, uh, uh, if you remember back, where, where we just had beaten uh, Louisiana Monroe uh, in a two-game series. And uh, after I had spoken to the team in left field, 
Um, I'm coming off the field. Chris Godors comes up to me and says, you know, we, I got a text from Lynette Johnson. They have a, a conference call at, I don't even remember, 830 or so, which would have put us, you know, in mid-trip, you know, back to Oxford uh, that you need to be on. And so I uh, uh, get on that call and, and, you know, it's just so surreal. You know, that was yeah. the first call that Keith got on and gave us all the information. He was in Nashville at the basketball tournament with all the athletic directors. And, you know, we had saw some of it on the national news, but never really thought, you know, that's, that's somewhere else. That's not here. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, they let us know that we would be playing games without anybody in the stands uh, besides the kids, you know, player pass list. So basically, you know, their, their family and girlfriends in the stands and, and you up in the booth, you know, doing the game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just kind of try to wrap your head, head around, you know, how different that's going to be that, you know, here we are ranked in the top five and, you know, about to open up SEC play. Everything's going so well. You know, we're, we're expecting, you know, 30 plus for a three game series in the stands and everybody coming back from spring break. And then all of a sudden you're, you're trying to wrap your head around what's that going to look like playing a game with, you know, like an inter squad game basically. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and then we find out probably less than 24 hours later, the SEC decides the next morning uh, to, to suspend the baseball or all athletics uh, till I, I, if I remember right, like April 1, March 31st, something like that. Uh, we already had practice scheduled. And so the players come out, we let them know that there will be no games. Call your parents, tell them that, you know, they don't need to come, uh, yada, yada, yada. And then literally about, you know, I tried to give them the best coach's speech I could, right? Like, hey, we're going to start this. We're, you know, we're going to finish what we started. Uh, we're going to inter squad. Doug Nikhazy's going to throw in an inter squad game tomorrow. And Gunner, you're going to throw on, on Saturday. And, and Derek, you'll throw on Sunday. And we'll just keep it. We'll be in shape. And when they say go, we'll be ready to go. And then all of a sudden, Three hours later, I'm literally on the treadmill uh, in the weight room while the guys are working out, and I'm reading the clicker that they canceled the NCAA basketball tournament, and mm -hmm. then you know next is they canceled you know all athletics, and I'm watching it like in real time. My guys are five feet away working out, you know, and I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh! So I turn off the TV, I run out of the weight room, I call Keith, and I said, is this you know, um, is this true? And he was just hearing about it, and. Uh, you know, and then of course you got to pull the kids in and, and tell them. So, you know, God, in, in, in the midst of about 24 to 36 hours, you went from, you know, about as well as things could be going for a college mm -hmm. baseball player to, uh, to it's over, you know, and, and, and really, and at that time, the seniors not knowing the juniors, Keenan Servideo, not knowing about the draft. I mean, it's just, again, to use that word, it's just so surreal. And uh, you really don't have the answers. It's not that this has ever happened before. And people have asked me, you know, like, and I get it, the, the, the health and safety of the athletes, of the fans, of everybody involved. And, and at that time, I don't think any of us could really wrap our, our minds around, you know, what could possibly happen and what's happening, right? And all the, the death and devastation uh, that's happened. And, and when, I, when I sit back and think, though, I still remember – uh, feeling and, and probably even telling the guys the reason it's so hard when a kid's 18 to 22 years old, you know, in their lifespan, but even in your, your and I's lifespan, uh, when we're around athletics, we know what the rules are. If you don't have as many runs or points mm -hmm. than the other team, when the buzzer rings, when the innings are over, you lose. And then there comes a time where if you lose, you don't play anymore. So to lose in a, uh, the World Series or Super Regional or whatever, those things are tough when the season ends. But we, we had just beaten the heck out of our last opponent. We were on a 16-game winning streak. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, and then somebody taps you on the shoulder and says it's over, you know, and, like, how do you explain that? And yeah. uh, so, um, but, you know, again, uh, like everything in life, you know, we'll have our story about this, but it goes on. And, uh, you know, proud, you know, the, of the way the guys have handled it. It was you know, a pretty emotional day for us. And, uh, but since then, you know, guys are working out and doing what they can do, you know, you know to, to this point. I'm sure you've been asked this. I've been asked this a lot. And for me, super weird. I've done SEC baseball 41 years, and this year I didn't do SEC baseball. And my last broadcast was a basketball game at that tournament you're talking about because I didn't right. just go with you to Monroe that ended ended everything. But all the, the baseball fans have, have played the what-if game. What if we could have continued? What could we have done? I even talked to Doug Casey, coach, a few weeks ago about 
you know, you just can't start checking off SEC wins uh, because it's a tough grind. It's a great league, yada, yada. But what did you feel like about this team? You've been associated with a bunch of teams, you know, even the LSU days and playing and all. This was this seemed like a really special team. Really, and, and, and sometimes you don't know until the games start. You know, certainly we – Entering the season, we felt good about the team. Anytime you you, you, you got as, as solid as number one and number two starter as, as Doug and Gunner, you, you feel you know good in any weekend. Um, but then when you look at uh, Servideo and Keenan, and even though we didn't return a lot of players on this team, and, and I think we said it from, from the outset, I mean, back in August, September, when people started asking about this team, and you got the number two ranked recruiting class. So obviously some very talented young kids, but the difference between this team and a few years ago when we had the number one ranked team is we had maybe some bigger pieces returning. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I mean. You have Doug, Gunner, you have Doug, you have some pieces in the bullpen like Miller uh, that, that, you know, certainly are going to be a, a good thing to build around a staff. Uh, when you look at the, the position players, you re return a leadoff guy in Servideo and a number three hole guy in, in Keenan, as good as we've ever had here. Uh, so we felt good about the team. But once we handled some adversity, and it wasn't easy, and that's one of the things, as you've seen over the years, when you look at the really good teams, it's not like you just beat the heck out of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, there's games, heck, I think we went extra innings with Alcorn State. You know, but rather than lose, you know, Servideo hits a home run like in the 10th or the 11th and we win. Uh, we, you know, we had a close game. We were losing against Southern Miss at home and Leatherwood hits a big home run, I think, to, to beat them. So we had some close games. We had some walk-offs. We had some games that we came from behind. We had some games where we had to out-hit them. We had some games where we out-pitched them, like, like East Carolina where we went 2-1, to one, you know, on the road against a hostile 5,000 people, you know, second weekend of the season and our guys handle it. So they handle a lot of different things. People talk about uh, that team, you know, looked like they were having fun. Well, when you win 16 in a row, it's fun, you know? <laughs> so, you know, to give me any team that wins 16 in a row, you, you're going to have a lot of fun. What would have happened? I've tried to not go that far because you just don't know. There's a lot of season in front of us. But, man, it would have been a lot of fun to watch that team because it had a lot of the pieces that I think you need to make a deep run, not it's just in postseason, but in the College World Series. When you talk about starting pitching, when you talk about pitching depth in the bullpen, when you talk about defense, when you talk about team speed, when you talk about offense one through nine, because let's face it, there's going to be a game where Savidio and Keenan don't hit. But will there be other people like Kale Baker and Chatnier and others, Leatherwood and Elko that was having a great year? There's other pieces, and you've seen the, the great teams that we've had. It wasn't just Stephen Head. It was other pieces in that lineup. It wasn't just Will Allen. It was other pieces in that lineup that make you so good. And so uh, a lot of what ifs, uh, but uh, – Again, there, there was only, I think we played 17 games. We were 16 and one. We were about as good as you could be in, in those 17 games for sure. Yeah, and you get to – when you get to the start of the SEC, you want a lot of questions. And I've been watching you and your program and your system for years, and I don't know if you could have been feeling any better at that moment in time. That's reality. That, that really, you know, happened. We got to that point where, okay, here comes league play. And man, we got a lot of good things going on. No doubt. And, and, I, and I think, yeah, we were playing as well as we could. And, you know, to be honest with you, when we looked at the schedule to begin with, uh, and we had a lot of tough games in front of us, but it was a, it was a pretty daunting first, you know, four weeks. Mm -hmm. And we played, like you said, we lost the first game, but we lost to like the best pitcher in the country. And, and really hung in there through about seven innings against them. And at one point had a lead against Detmers. Uh, we, and we end up losing that game and don't play well. And probably the most proud I was, was the next day. Mm -hmm. How we, we won a really close game against Louisville with runners on at the end of the game and a bounce back from that Friday night where, again, we got a lot of young guys and a lot of guys that hadn't been out there. You got Foresight on the mound that's, you know, although we, we think he's going to be that closer, he hadn't closed one yet, you know, <laughs> and, and here you are with 10,000 in the stands and, and they're batting with, the, you know, you know the, the winning run on base and we were able to close that game out and close that weekend out. So uh, it was the start of something special. Yeah, we liked where we were. Um, uh, and would have liked to, to see it play out like a lot of people. You had uh, Doug DeCasey make All-American uh, even after the, the short season. Hey, Dunhurst, Peyton Chatney, both 
freshman All-America, which is really, really, really cool. And then you get two kids drafted in Sir Video and Kenyon, as we've talked about. And it's always sort of bittersweet. <laughs> Our league, you need that to be ongoing, and those guys have an opportunity because you know that to, to be good, the pros are going to want your guys. And you and I talked about that in the past. I don't know you're awfully proud of those two kids. No, no doubt, and, and, and it is. Part of the, the attrition, you know, in, on our sport is guys leaving early and signing as juniors and moving on to professional baseball, and I think it's close to 120 guys since I've been here now, and um, just proud of those guys. And, again, it's it, we briefly talked about it. They didn't really know. We didn't know going up to the draft if they were going to have a draft, how many rounds. When they cut it to five, wow, you yeah. know. That I think we had I think we had nine kids drafted the year before, if I'm not mistaken, but only two drafted in top five rounds. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to look back, you know, that means Caracy comes back, Zebo comes back, <laughs> Roth comes back. Uh, you know, so many guys off that, you know, the team before. Uh, and so you don't know how it's going to affect us. But we knew those guys certainly uh, not were – not only were deserving, but the scouts in, in our area, you know, love those guys, and why not? Just just tremendous players, uh, and uh, and so I'm happy for them, obviously. And when we talked a lot, we had a lot to, you know, more talking, more conversations with them uh, leading up to the draft than probably anybody we've ever had in the program. Uh, but I'm proud of them because they've handled it the right way, and I think, you know, uh, we'll find some positives out of this, you know, uh, pandemic and some, uh, and, and, and I think that was one of it. It gave those guys a chance to kind of sit back and really get a game plan for the draft. Cause I think both of them, uh, both Tyler and Anthony and their families were prepared, you know, uh, going in because as you know, the unfortunate thing for, for a college baseball player is, man, you're playing right up to it, you know, right. hopefully. You know, and, and maybe playing during the draft. Uh, uh, and so, you know, so many times they're either on the field or at practice when this is all going on, and it's kind of unfair. Uh, but for those guys to, to really have a plan going in, and when I say plan, am I going to sign for this much? The, these guys are talking to me and they're saying this, you know, what, what's my bottom line, so to speak? And, uh, and you know, of course, you know, they're, they're getting to live out a dream. And, you know, Tyler's on the, on the 60 man. Uh, so that's really cool, you know. So he's getting hit in a big league stadium with the big leaguers every single day, and uh, and Anthony, I think, is going to get invited to big league spring spring training next next spring. And uh, so you know, both of them are, are you know living their dream. No doubt, awfully pleased and proud of them. You got some relief in the NCA from a scholarship standpoint to a certain degree. The opportunity for guys to come back get another year of eligibility. Uh, how is this all this newness going to work out, uh, you know, as far as the team next year? I know you want to wave a magic wand and go right back to that point where we pick up LSU. In fact, my wife, Mary, you know Mary Rose. She's, she wants it to be the same SEC schedule. Let's don't mess it up. Just, you know, slide it for a year. I don't know if they made that decision or not. But uh, there is some relief in the NCAA to, to, you know, be able to have a really strong team next year. Right. And, and you mentioned several things that – you know, there's so many pieces to this, and, and one part is um, what was the NCA going to do? So here you, you have the season cut short. You have these seniors, uh, and we had four of them. You know, uh, what happens to those guys? Do they, do they get the year back? Do we not give them the year back? Do they uh, – if you give them the year back, now you have five classes, mm -hmm. right? You have, you know, the freshmen coming in. And then you have the freshmen, the sophomore, juniors, and the seniors. And, and I don't, you know, the, the thing we haven't figured out now is what do we call them? You know, do we call them the, the super seniors? Do we call, you know, the, the freshman A, freshman B? You know, um, and so basically you have two freshman classes because what the NCAA did was say, we're going to just void that year. You got to be careful. Uh, to not use the term red shirt because it doesn't count as a red shirt year mm -hmm. because a red shirt you, year, as you know, you have, you know, five years to play for generally. And so if you red shirt uh, because of an injury or just because you, you didn't participate, you, you still have to play, you know, your four years within a five year span, you know, unless you petition the NCA. So this didn't count as one of those years. It just was voided. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people that already had a red shirt year, that year didn't count as well. And so they did not count the year for anybody. So the seniors could return as seniors, juniors could return as juniors, sophomores, and so on. Uh, they, 
the only scholarship, so it's one of the things is the only, we have 11.7 scholarships that are divided, you know, amongst 27 players. The only scholarship relief that they gave us was that they would not count the seniors returning because through normal attrition, you weren't expected that those were going to leave. Right. But as you can tell, we just talked about the draft, not so much on our roster this current year, but so many other rosters. If this would have happened a year ago, where we had seven guys that signed after the fifth round mm -hmm. that we expected to leave, but now aren't leaving. Now what happens to your roster? Now what happens to your scholarships? So those programs that were really junior laden that had a lot of really good players that expected them to get drafted and sign, that put it, their, their roster, I think, in, in, in a, quite a crunch. Ours, not as bad. I think where our crunch is going to happen is in a few years because we have two freshman classes. Right. And, right. you know, the freshman class – the year before, the one that played Chatney's class, those freshmen, you know, one freshman from last year, that was a giant class. Mm -hmm. And so now you got another class, and they're both, you know, in that freshman classification. At the end of the day, we were fortunate because we return a lot of people mm -hmm. and uh, off a really good team. And uh, I think, though, and I'll end it with this about that, that question, we have to be careful. It's great for the fans to go, we got everybody back, and we're 16-1, and one, and let's start off where we're that, – that's, yeah. that's fine, and that's great. But this won't be – you know, people are different, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and I don't mean that we're not going to be good. I think we're going to be great. But, you know, the, the, the freshmen that were freshmen last year now are going to be sophomores. We're hoping they're going to be better. You know, yeah. and there, you know, yeah. people, different things happen. A guy gets hurt here, or, you know, guys find some different roles. And so I'm excited to see, just like every year, you know, the development, to, to watch the kids come back out and, and what they're going to look like, you know, in this 2021 season. Well, and we could talk all night. Is senior leadership coming back? I mean, that the value of that piece has got to be huge. And uh, you're going to have – I don't know the other schools are going to have some of this to their advantage too, but – uh, that part's pretty interesting. Let me ask you this. We play the the, the what-if game, uh, Coach. The, the uh, Ivy League decided they're not going to play in the fall. They're just canceling sports. I don't know if that's going to have impact on Power Fives or not. But if Power Fives get to the point where football goes to January, and let's say they say we don't want all these sports on top of each other, so baseball needs to slide and maybe do, you know, mid mid spring and first summer term or something of that nature. What's your thought, Ben, just even before the pandemic of maybe – baseball going a little bit later well there's a proposal out there matter of fact you know we're uh, on thursday you're filming this early i don't know if people are supposed to know that or not uh <laughs> but uh I, I blew it if, if, if they're not that's fine it is thursday uh, yeah but uh we're, we're we have a conference call eric backage from the coach from university of michigan mm -hmm. has put together with several other co coaches a proposal uh to push the season back there's there's a lot of it's it's just not that easy you know, there, there's a lot of talking points about that. Me personally, you know, we're, we'll play whenever they tell us to play. You know, we, we change rules a lot and we do what, you know, and certainly because of the pandemic, if, if the athletic directors and, the, and the, the commissioner think it's best and the NCAA people think it's best that we need to move our season, then certainly we have to move our season and, and we'll go. And, and, and part of me is like, hey, we're baseball. We're used to that. We're used to, hey, we're supposed to play at six, but it's raining. We'll play at eight. Okay, it's mm -hmm. still raining. We'll mm -hmm. play a doubleheader tomorrow and so on. Okay, instead of a double elimination tournament, we'll make it single elimination. That at nine innings, we'll play seven innings. We're kind of built that way. Right. Uh, so we'll do whatever they tell us to do. Um, I'm not a big fan. I, I, if we have to do it because of the pandemic, I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if you're asking me, should we push the season back? Um, because it wouldn't be just pushing it back. Uh, in their proposal, the College World Series is like a month later. And so mm -hmm. we would have the national championship game. Right now, we would be in regionals. And that's hard for me to really wrap my head around. And right. for a lot of reasons, and, and I don't want to be demeaning to any program, but, but most of this is, is, is pointed at uh, gener generating revenue for baseball. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that issue. You know, right. We sell a lot of tickets. And, and would the northern schools draw more if they were playing later? Sure, they would, but not all of them. And I don't mm -hmm. think they would draw like us, just like a lot of schools in the south don't draw like we do. 
And so there's, there's schools that have had tremendous success that have great facilities and they don't draw. And that's a whole nother topic and conversation. But I just don't think if we push the season back, all of a sudden everybody's going to be drawing 9,000 people. You know, you've sat in a stadium where it's been very cold. It's not just, you know, cold in Michigan. It's cold everywhere. Right. And so uh, I, I don't know if I'd necessarily buy that. Uh, I, you know, to, to, to play more than half of your season or half your season when the kids aren't in school, I don't know if that's what intercollegiate athletics was really designed to do. Right. Uh, I get to push it back a couple weeks, uh, possibly, mm-hmm. you know, uh, save some travel for those northern schools. But shorten the season, not necessarily 56, play more midweek games. You know, people go, well, what about academics? Our guys don't have an issue with academics. Right. You know, we had a team GPA 3.0, and that's not just us. That's really college baseball. If you look around, I don't think academics is a problem. And so for I, so I made this comment, and this is a little pompous, but, you know, you know you, we can't take that from the athletic directors. If they say, oh, well, what about academics? Don't, don't throw another card at us. Don't throw the academic <laughs> card, right? The academic card yeah. doesn't work. We're, we're going to be fine yeah. and uh, academically. And so um, my concern, somebody said, well, what happens if they're playing football at the same time as you? Can you imagine what a great weekend? Oh, yeah. No. I mean, it's bad for you. That's maybe why you don't want it, because you want to do the games. So yeah. I'm going to push for you to do Friday and Sunday, and somebody like Harry <laughs> Carey will do the middle game. And, uh, you know, yeah. but, but my, can you, when we look at, you know, our largest attended weekends, it's Grove Bowl weekend, right? right. It's when, when right. all those fans are coming here. Can you imagine if football was playing at 11 o'clock and we were playing at four o'clock or five o'clock later that afternoon where fans could leave the football game, go to the Grove and come over here or vice versa. Right. You know, if they were playing at six o'clock, we played at noon. Uh, and remember, they're not playing all three days. You know, they're playing once. Mm-hmm. And so there's no doubt we could work around that and, and, and figure that out. Now, again, there's a lot of logistics. I'm not trying to meal meet and all the people that handle the parking and the security. Yeah. I totally they're, get they're it. They're painting um, right now as they listen to you. <laughs> right. But, you know, you, you know, you're really talking about eight games, you know, and we don't even know if those eight games conflict. Right. 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 So we don't even know of those eight weekends, uh, you know, do they conflict or not if we're going to be home the same time they are. So I don't know if it's as bad a thing as, you know, God, I think it's going to be a great weekend. And as, as an Ole Miss fan, I mean, how cool would that be to, to come up here on Friday, watch a ball game, go to bed, wake up the next morning, watch a football game at noon, you know, go back to your condo or go back to the Grove and come to a baseball game seven o'clock that night wake up the next morning and game three. You know, I yeah. Think it'd yeah. Be a pretty cool weekend. It would be a cool weekend. There's no question about that. And uh, I think from a fan standpoint, it would be really, really exciting uh, to say the least. Hey, always love visiting with you. Uh, again, congratulations on what was a, a very good shortened season. And I know you, you lost one coach in Mark McMillan. We congratulate him going to Charleston Southern. So, uh, some uh, one staff member yeah. out, and he's a former rebel. But gosh, was he not ready to do this? He's a good guy. Yeah, just proud of him and a guy that's. When you talk about pay your dues, uh, you know somebody that uh, has really done that, and proud of him. Nobody more deserving. He's going to do terrific there. I mean, he's just a, uh, a workaholic, just a guy that grinds it out, and just he's meant so much to our program. Been with us since 2014 on that College World Series team. Uh, and been with us for a long time. So we're excited for him and his wife, Andrea, and their two kids. And uh, he's been there, you know, uh, uh, you know, grinding it out, trying to get some ball players, and uh, just excited for him. All right, Coach. Hey, thank you, Mr. Mike. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Thanks, David. Good to see Stay you. Safe, man. All right. Coming up next, Corey Hinkins from Women's Golf on Red Talk. In sports, success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. In fact, 9 out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend Shelter to a friend. To find out how Shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. 
Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice mint on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the vault Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. We've been deemed an essential business so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. Welcome back again to Rev Talk as we are having another edition of Rev Talk here in the summer months. And uh, as we talked about earlier in the show, a couple of coaches that were off to great starts uh, this past spring and things just kind of ended suddenly for us. And one of those courses are women's golf coach Corey Hinkas. Corey, great to have you. Going into season number six, it seems like you just got here yesterday. Yeah, I feel the same way. Thanks for having me tonight, uh, David. I appreciate it. And I feel like I got here just yesterday. I can't believe it's already, you know, five years have already passed. So it's it's been fun. It's been a rewarding uh, journey that we've been on. And, um, you know, I love being here at Ole Miss and it's, it's really been great. You know, you were three and two, finished three, two, and we, we, you know, I'm talking about it before we started the interview and then had four straight number ones before uh, COVID hit. So our women's golf team was rolling when we had to stop. They were. You know, that was a tough pill to swallow when we had to stop because of that. You know, this has been the best season we've ever had in school history. And the girls were just really knocking it out of the park. And, um, you know, we lost to two people all year long. So, um, you know, that's definitely – Definitely hard for us, but, you know, we understand the big picture and, um, you know, there's more important things going on out there. But um, it was a fantastic year, you know, nonetheless, by the Ole Miss women's golf team. Two congratulations for you. One of them's bigger than the other one, and that's just had another baby. So we have baby number two, you and Kenneth Parker and Kate now. Kate, just a few weeks old, right? A couple weeks old. She's five weeks old. So thank you very much. It's um, It's been probably got bags under my eyes you can see no sleep you know how that goes so um, Parker's 20 months old and Kate's five weeks old so we, we've been busy not much sleep but it's been um, it's been great she's a good baby and can't complain well and SEC uh, coach of the year congratulations on that that is that is awesome and very well deserved even though the season was uh, shortened but we've seen the trajectory of women's golf since you've been here and it's been uh, phenomenal but maybe having a baby also qualifies you to have a head up on some of the rest of the coaches in the league huh? <laughs> well I don't know we have a good coaching staff in our league so uh, yeah. it's definitely an honor to receive um coach of the year and definitely couldn't do it without the help of you know Zach Bird my assistant coach and all my players and administration and you know my my husband and family who helps you know when I'm on the road a lot so um definitely excited for that award and a team effort for sure you know, got an SEC championship under your belt since you've been here just as you envisioned this, I remember talking to you years ago about, you know, we want to be a national product, and it seems like it's happening. 
you know, it's unfolding for you. Are you pretty pleased with, with the trajectory of the, of the program right now? Absolutely. I mean, we finished the season ranked 11th in the country. Um, you know, we started at 134 five years ago. So right. I would say that's a pretty good progress. And, you know, we don't want to stop until we win a national championship. So, um, you know, the, the players that we have on our team and the coaching staff are all on the same page. And, you know, that, that's our goal 100%. And that's the reason that we have some players returning this, you know, taking their fifth year of eligibility due to COVID because they want to do the same thing. They were, you know, disappointed that we didn't have the chance to give it a run this year. So, um, you know, they want to come back and see what we can do this coming year. We talked to Julia Johnson back when Rev Talk was live at Boo Ray, had another visit with her. I think I've had her on a couple of times. What a phenomenal mm -hmm. young lady and a tremendous uh, student athlete we have on campus. Oh, she's amazing. I mean, you're not going to find, I mean, many players, you know, many people like her. She's just fantastic. And like you, you, know, you noticed it just in the little bit of time that you spent with her. She just, she gets it. She's leads Ole Miss through and through. And um, she really is just a great person, great athlete, good student, just all around package. So really excited, um, you know, to have her for, you know, hopefully a couple more years and um, just see what else she can do at Ole Miss. And, you know, currently she was all American this past year and she, every record that Ole Miss. So really excited for her. And I know, she, you know, she's going to do a lot, a lot more great things for us. I, I want to ask you this because in the other sports and your sports included in this, uh, the NCA granted another year of eligibility for the, the spring ending abruptly. We talked to Coach Bianco. Of course, he lost a couple of players to the draft. But uh, because yeah. of that, he's getting pretty much everybody else back. How did it affect women's golf? Yeah, we're getting everyone back as well. Um, we have one player, our Connor Beth Ball, who is – she's going to go to grad school, and she's actually getting married in November. So she's the only one who's not going to take her fifth year. But, you know, she just got into a great graduate program and really – really excited for her and what, you know, what her future holds. So, um, but then Kennedy Swan and uh, P, they're both coming back for their fifth year and they're going to get their MBA. And um, so it's going to be, you know, a good deal for them and excited to get them back for another year because they were both having a great season as well. So do you think you'd get back to where you were and, and get back to that momentum? I mean, that, that'd be the goal. You know, it's hard to replicate what we had going on. You know, you mm -hmm. just can't rebuild the team chemistry and what we had. Um, you know, because it is a different team next year, different players. Not everyone's here. We have some new ones, but we're going to give it our best and, um, you know, see what happens. But I know everyone is on board for wanting to accomplish, try to accomplish that again. But um, either way, you can't take away what the girls accomplished last year. And, um, you know, like I said, it was a great season and just, just cut a little too short for us. I know some of the, some of the girls getting to play this summer. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so they can play in summer events. So a lot of my players that are back home, like Kiara just played in one, played great golf over in Switzerland. Um, Julia's been playing in a couple of events. Um, McKinley Cunningham, she's coming in this fall. She's been playing some great golf. She shot 64, you know, one of her rounds. Um, so it's been great. Kennedy Swans, she's out in Oregon right now. So she's living out there for the summer and she played in a couple of events and played some great golf. And I know they're just excited to compete again since it's been so long since they were able to compete. So just trying to knock some of that, you know, rust off and get ready for the season. Well, it allows them to kind of keep an edge. Seems like golf's been one of the sports that, you know, that has been able to continue uh, to some degree. And I know some of our other student athletes have been pretty much locked up at home and trying to stay in shape and do those kind of things and can't really participate in their in their sport yeah. at this point. Yeah, most of the girls, like the Swedish players didn't really have any, they didn't really lock down at all, but like Switzerland, she couldn't leave the house for a couple months. And so it's been very, it's been different, you know, for each country and each player. But, um, you know, golf is probably the safest sport of any sport as far as COVID goes, because you can play by yourself and not get near anybody. So um, fortunately we do have that going for us and it does allow summer golf tournaments to continue and these players to have the opportunity to keep um, practicing and working on their game. You mentioned Connor Beth deciding not to take the advantage of the extra year, but you do have some new people coming in, like you mentioned. Tell us a, tell us a little bit about them and uh, how quickly you think they can get up to speed with the outstanding golfers you got coming back. Yeah, I mean, McKinley, she's uh, from Tennessee, and she works so hard. We're so excited for her. I mean, she wants nothing more to be in the lineup right out of the gate. So um, she's coming in. We have Smilla Sonderby coming in from Denmark, who, um, you know, plays on their national team and just a really good player, um, you know, got the same work ethic that, that we look for in all of our players. And then we have another player coming in. She's transferring from Charleston Southern. She um, is from England, Ellen Hume, and she had a great 
um, two years at Charleston Southern. So we're looking forward to what, you know, she can bring to the table as well. So I really think it's, you know, we're going to pick right off, you know, right up where we left off and um, just, you know, keep heading in the right tra trajectory for sure. You know, another thing, and, and sometimes we kind of put it on the back burner, really shouldn't, but in June, Ole Miss Women's Golf uh, had a program record five players earned Women's Golf Coach Association All-American Scholar Honors, uh, and that's just incredible. It's a minimum of a 3.5 GPA. Uh, I believe P Hermeson, four straight years now, the Swedish native with double major in psychology and French, and, and, mm -hmm. and we really should talk about that at the head of things, I think, in when we talk about student athletes, but you got to be awfully pleased with that. Well, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, you're a student before you're an athlete. And, you know, as much as I want them to be fantastic athletes, they have to be eligible. And, you know, my players are most of them are engineer majors. Um, you know, you see a double major out of P. So they're not taking easy majors. They're all, you know, like Julia was like, how many master's degrees can I try to get before I leave here? You know, so like they want to do well. They want to succeed and be successful as all around people and not just, um, you know, good golfers. So five is the most we've ever had in school history. And I mean, that's a lot of, you know, five out of eight made that team. Um, and I had several others that have 4.0s, but they just, you know, two other players, but they missed the playing in the 50% of the tournaments just by a tournament or so. Um, so overall, it's a really good academic team and just really pleased with how hard they work on, you know, on their academics as well as their golf game. You play over two semesters. When do you start this year? Is the schedule out? Uh, uh, and hopefully, can you start on time is another question, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the schedule, to be honest, is a little fluid right now. I mean, it's we have it, but, you know, we just don't know. We're trying to arrange some things depending on the travel and different things coming up, and hopefully we're playing this fall. You know, a lot of it depends on football, and we're just kind of in a holding pattern right now. And currently, I have, I'll have 10 players, and I can only, only have four that I have for this fall because I can't get six of them back in the country right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting and that might affect my scheduling a little bit as well if I can't get my players back here. So um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll make the most of it. And if we need to play with four this fall, we'll play with four. So um, you have to have four count each, each round that you play. So, um, you know, we start out in Charleston, South Carolina in September mm -hmm. and um, we'll play four events this fall and then four events in the spring as well before postseason play. You know, you raised the bar, and, you know, as Ole Miss fans, we're really excited about where, where it's going and, and all. Is there a hunger among these, especially returning players, that have seen the success, have seen, seen that, hey, we're as good as anybody in the league, which is an incredible league as well. Is there a hunger now to say, okay, let's, let's take it all the way? Because, I mean, there's a possibility of that. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of funny. Like, after we went, we won four events, and you could see them still not happy. Mm -hmm. we only won by this many we should have won by this many you know so um it's kind of neat to see the mindset change of how it was a few years ago when we were just excited to win and now it's what could we do better to win by more <laughs> or you know and that's how they're thinking that's not what we're saying to them but that's just the mindset that they're having like what can we do to get better to help us win a national championship so um you know every little shot counts in golf and um you know if we want to win a national championship that stuff matters. So I think it's really cool to see them take ownership of the team and want to improve on any little thing that will help us get that national championship. And, um, you know, it comes from our leadership. We've had great leaders with P being a senior, Kennedy Swan and Julia Johnson. Um, you know, they're fantastic and they just really pull the team together and they have such different personalities, but it really works. And um, they're just really good leaders for our team. The reason Corey Hink is who, of course, is our women's golf coach at Ole Miss and came, played at South Carolina uh, back in the day, not too far back. Yeah, it's been a little, while. A <laughs> little bit back. Uh, let me ask you this before I let you go. Just from a general sense, women's golf period these days, just your thought on it, not only from the collegiate level, but from a professional level, progress it's made, uh, and just how, what do you think the state of women's golf is right now? I think we're in a really good spot. You see a lot of the purses in professional golf growing and giving more opportunities to um, girls to play professional golf after you see a lot more mini tours available for players to play on. Um, you know, it's, it's just really growing. And I think it's been really neat to see. And um, golf's such a wonderful sport that you can play your entire life. And it's good for the business world once you get out of college as well. So 
Um, I'm just really proud of where women's golf is currently and, you know, where it was and where it's grown to at this point. So, um, you know, all we can do is just keep growing and um, growing the game and trying to get more girls out here playing. No, no doubt. Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. I know you just had a little one and we kind of pulled you away from that, but uh, we're looking forward to hopefully getting everything back to normal soon. Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me and um, have a great day. Hotty toddy. All right, Corey. Corey Hink is joining us here on Rev Talk, and that'll wrap up this week's edition. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.